performance versus polarization what do you think is more important and why what do you think voters ultimately decide you've got experience in assam tripura we're in west bengal right now what do you think matters more i mean ideally i would like to say performance uh, but the reality is why you win an election or lose one i think is very multifaceted and there are many factors uh, i think any any politician would like to be judged uh, when they go to a vote on the basis of their performance but i'm sad to say that uh, polarization is the harsh reality of uh, indian politics today and is absolutely uh, no denying that it plays a very very important factor but i would like to add to that uh, and i'm sure my friends here would agree with me that social engineering is a reality of indian politics so if emo or pradyut or i said that social engineering is not important that wouldn't be true i mean you have to look at different caste communities what their sentiments are and social engineering is very much a part of electoral politics but i think polarization is the negative side to it so i think we have to make a distinction between social engineering and polarization and at least as a i'm not so young politician anymore but as as a politician i would like to say and like to believe that performance matters but how much does it matter i think uh, my colleagues will say that polarization plays a very very big role in indian politics today and often the charge of polarization emo is leveled against uh, the bharatiya janata party that in states like assam states like uh, west bengal in different places in the northeast the party is using polarization rather than performance uh, to scare the majority community into voting for the bjp and against the minority community how do you respond to this chair uh, let me just say like this um anybody who wants to perform well in life what do they do whether it's a class 10 student or a class 10 uh, 12 student you want to do well in life you want to get good marks similarly if you're a sports person you want to be the best you want to perform similarly if you're a doctor an engineer it's the same for politics also we all want to perform we want to do well where we are to serve the people i happen to be the first mla from my constituency who has won three consecutive elections since 1972 when manipur got statehood so 50 years so i was wondering why people were not winning so i guess performance matters there may be so many factors to win an election but perhaps the most important thing is performance if you don't perform you may win one election but the next election you are out so and where does polarization fit so that's what i'm coming to your ranking of things that matter see, in determining see, the results uh, even even in the recent assembly elections just recently in manipur you can say to, in 2017 we won the election uh, 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 the bjp won the election because uh, of the anti incumbency of the congress but how did they come back to 2022 to win the election by majority because of performance of the government so uh, what i feel is if at all if you are the, the word you are using uh, polarization i think I, i don't think there is you know uh, if at all this polarization it is polarization towards performance towards performance prajit emo makes a argument in the context of manipur to say even if 2017 was an anti congress vote 2020 two was a vote in favor of the bjp on account of its performance which is why we won therefore performance matters more than polarization where do you come out on this no i i think uh, to be very honest I, uh, we cannot pick and choose what emo says or what sushmita says but i'm a keen student of politics and the history of politics should always be looked into the bjp approached the 2004 election with performance india shining they lost they approached the 2019 election by saying ghar ke andar ja ke mara and they won the election so obviously at some point they've also had a cause correction that only performance does not matter because the indian voter is also very emotional when we come and talk about the northeast the northeast you have to understand unlike uh, other states in india the northeast is surrounded by china on one side myanmar bangladesh bhutan and there is a sense of insecurity amongst the local population which is largely the indigenous population that they will be flooded with people from outside so when a government of india comes out with certain bills 
which says that we will protect you or we will protect your interest, they are also playing to a polarization card. Uh, if you see what happened in parts of Northeast when there was uh, the burning of a temple in uh, Bangladesh, the reaction immediately in the Northeast was reaction towards burning or vandalizing of mosques. So these are not mutually exclusive and this sort of geographical identity to Northeast is a perfect playing ground for polarization. However, I do believe that if the Northeast has to develop, we have to look at economic prosperity, we have to look at connectivity and much like uh, the BJP's former ideologue Vajpayee Ji said, you cannot choose your neighbors, we have to live with our neighbors but by constitutionally protecting our rights. And if the BJP really wants to protect the people, then they should constitutionally bring in amendments to protect the people rather than playing into the threat perception that across the border there are many people and they will come in submerged. Ajay Emo Singh, let's get you to respond to the charge that Pradyut levels, which we've seen play out in elections in West Bengal, in elections in Assam, in Tripura and elsewhere, the fear of the outsider coming in, taking away land, taking away jobs and using that as a tool for polarization. See, uh, we are from such a small, remote corner of the country, all the seven, eight northeastern states. We, whatever we do, nobody notices. Unfortunately, this has been what has been happening in the last 40, 50 years. Therefore, I'm more than happy to say this. A bill like inner line permit which when I was in the Congress, we went to the, uh, for the delegation to the then Home Minister, along with the then Chief Minister, asking for the inner line permit to protect the minorities and the, uh, you know, uh, our own uh, indigenous people. That was not done. But today, this government, the government under the leadership of our Prime Minister and the Home Minister in the Parliament gave ILP to Manipur. So I guess things when you have certain things towards the government and that performance is delivered, that those assurances are delivered, people do look up to. You want to respond to that, Pratip, before I ask? It's, 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 it's very uh, commendable that they've, uh, uh, they've looked into the aspiration of the people of Manipur. But inner line permit uh, is not been implemented in states which actually have boundary with Bangladesh. Uh, Assam has boundary with Bangladesh. You have not uh, implemented inner line permit. Tripura has uh, boundaries with Bangladesh, you haven't done it. Meghalaya has it, but you have done it in states where there is actually no international boundary with Bangladesh. And uh, the fact is, you can't pick and choose states. If you want to bring in a law, bring it in totality. Don't pick and choose in states where your vote bank gets affected. And the fact is that, unfortunately, you know, I do not hold brief uh, against BJP or for the Congress party. But unfortunately, like what Emo has said, all political parties have played politics with Northeast largely because they, you are not mentally connected and your heart is not connected with the Northeast because you are too far away. No, but can I counter that to say and ask all of you, and I will start by asking Sushmita, uh, about the fact that there is now more development, lesser corruption, more visible infrastructure projects than ever before. My dad was posted in Tawang, so I used to come to Arunachal as a young child and then I came recently for a shoot the level of infrastructure, the speed at which you can get in, when in a state like Assam or Arunachal Pradesh, the BJP does well, they can argue with roads on the ground, airports on the ground to say, performance is what we've delivered, performance is what matters and it is our performance that is being vindicated in these electoral wins that we are registering and you can't counter that by throwing the polarization bogey their way. If, if the if your narrative that you're saying that infrastructure has improved so much in the northeastern states, then you have to ask the question what Pradyut raised to say, then why do you need laws which divide or polarize? You see, the Modi government. But do you is accept that infrastructure, in, because you were part of the UPA administration, do you accept that infrastructure in the northeast, in Assam, Arunachal and elsewhere is substantially better now than it was on your watch while you were in the UPA? You see, Rahul, development is an ongoing process. Okay, and the fact is today the longest bridge in northeast, in Assam, 
was built during the UPA time. Unfortunately, there's nobody here on this panel from the Congress. So I'm having to say it. Three ex-Congress people. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so what I'm saying is that you can't say that this government has done all the work and previous governments haven't. Yes, some have done less, some have done more. But I think, yes, what the BJP has definitely managed to do is two things. Is done a better PR exercise of the work they have done. Like, I, let me give you a small example. Joyanta Ghoshal is here. He knew my father well. The broad gauge that came to Silcher came during uh, the UPA time. It is he and Manmohan Singh who declared it as a national project. But by the time it was completed, it was the BJP that inaugurated it and says, see, they couldn't complete it. So they are a master at building a narrative to say they have done all work and nothing has happened before that. But I want to add one thing, Rahul. Northeast is not Gujarat and Maharashtra and Andhra Pradesh. You know, the unicity of Northeast is our ethnicity. And anybody who understands the Northeast, yes, we are remote, we need infrastructure. It could be the gateway to Asia. But the only way to hold Northeast together is stability and unity. That is the key. It's a bit like Jammu Kashmir, if you like. It's a very sensitive area thousands of kilometers of international border. So there are much larger issues and it will take a longer, you can do a whole conclave uh, on it. I mean, you've seen, you know, in Nagaland, the political crisis has been going on for years. In Assam, the inner line per permit, there are two views on the inner line permit. I mean, Imo will, see, inner line permit is uh, basically something that says that Within this tribal area, outsiders can't come. That is non-tribal people, but who are citizens of the country. Am I right? So these are all controversial. They come, but uh, they need to take. They limited like trade licenses. So northeast is an extremely sensitive area, just like Punjab and Jammu and Kashmir. It's not just about building roads and railways. And uh, I'm happy you went to Tawang and you saw. Uh, what you saw, but don't Into forget. Also. Yeah, but don't forget, Rahul. The amount of incursions that have happened on the Arunachal border from China has never happened in the past. So, if you talk about development Arunachal, you got to talk about the Chinese incursions on the border too. I think that's equally important in the larger picture. So, you've thrown some grenades Emo's way. Let's take it one by one. The charge that the UPA government started the infrastructure projects—it's a matter of time. It is just chance that the conclusion of some of those projects happened on your watch and now you're good at marketing and therefore making it seem as if you did everything and Manmohan did nothing. See, uh, I will not deny the fact that, you know, India, what, it's, we achieved its independence in 1947 for over 60, 70 years. Some form of development has taken place across the country. Yes, no doubt. But since 19, uh, see, sorry, since uh, the last few years, we've witnessed a lot of change. Yesterday, if you witnessed the National BJP Executive Meet, what was the focus upon by the Prime Minister and the Home Minister that will solve most of the issues in the Northeast by 2024? So what I'm trying to say is the kind of things which they're thinking for the people there. No, but some you of know, it, Sushmita alleges is marketing. Let's take the Nagaland why, why, issue, why, for why, example, why, why, where there was why, a grand why, why, public declaration. No, hear, hear me, where there was a grand public declaration of the problem being solved, there was a big press conference, and at the end of it, uh, even today we are nowhere close to resolution. In fact, it seems to have become more intractable than in the past, whereas you've already claimed credit for it. See, uh, see, to me, things which are facts are facts. I'll just give you an example from Manipur right now, the Armed Forces Special Power Act. Uh, Rajiv was there in uh, Manipur in front of uh, Kangla when he interviewed us just before the election. Why is AFSPA not there in your manifesto? He asked. I said AFSPA should not be politicized. This will be an, a process which will be done by the government once elections are over. And within two months, the central government removed from 16 uh, police stations uh, across six districts in Manipur and so on to other parts of the northeastern state. So where there's will, I think there's a way. That's what I believe in. Performance, work for the people, that's what this government has done, even during COVID. In these two years, all of us have suffered. All of us. But India has produced, what, the largest vaccination, this thing, across uh, the globe? Two, more than 200 peop peop uh, crore people have been w vaccinated, I think, across the whole country. And then we are exporting uh, vaccines also. 
then the kind of beneficial schemes which are reaching the uh, public even during COVID, or even now, the, the, the Prime Minister's uh, uh, the rice, free rice distribution, all those things. So one charge was about marketing, the other was about incursions. And the presence of the PLA, Sushmita alleges, uh, on Indian soil with more frequent incursions than in the past. I don't know where she picked up that data point from, because the army would deny it, but anyway, since she's leveled I the charge... I also don't know whether, whether uh, you know, because I, I also I, don't have... I, I, I'm just saying that... Sorry, Imo, yeah, yeah. to interrupt. Uh, but I, what I'm trying to say is when you spoke about the infrastructure, so I said that's a very oversimplistic view of looking at the Northeast and its issues. That's what I meant. So you had a member of parliament from the Arunachal screaming in parliament talking about incursions and he comes from the BJP and ND alliance. I didn't say it. So I believe the member of parliament on the floor of the house belonging to the BJP must be speaking some truth about the international incursions on, on the Chinese border. That's what I meant. See, uh, let me say it like this. Over the last 60, 70 years, we have been facing lots of uh, issues uh, politically, internationally, whether it's from the Pakistan or from Bangladesh or from Myanmar or from China. So it's not something which is happening recently or now. These things have been happening. I won't completely deny it. It, it, it has been happening on and off, but it doesn't mean that India has gone backward. India, I think, in these last eight years have moved a lot ahead than what it was in 2014 and now what it is. In Raju, there's a big election uh, coming up in Tripura where the BJP has changed its chief minister. You've now moved out from the Congress, set up your own party. How do you see this change impacting the anti-incumbency which seemed to be building up against the BJP? And in this third formation that you've set up, are you more aligned towards Narendra Modi or Rahul Gandhi? See, uh, right now I'm aligned to you, Rahul. <laughs> but uh, let me, uh, you know, that question that you had asked, Imo, is very important. And I just wanted to say, yes, there has been development. I will not say that it's just PR. Uran scheme has been very successful. And I appreciate where the government has done work. But like Sushmita has said, that we need to first protect our existence. We need to protect our identity and our culture. That's why the Honorable BJP MLA is talking about inner line permit and the BJP MLA in Tripura is not talking about inner line permit. So there is a duality in the conversation. Coming back to your question regarding Tripura, they have changed the Chief Minister. Uh, I wish the new Chief Minister all the very best, Mr. Dr. Manik Shah. I haven't met him till now. When we do meet, I will uh, extend my greetings to him. But the fact is that my politics is not dependent on what BJP is doing or what Congress is doing. We are here to actually bring in a certain constitutional solution to our demand of greater Tipra land. And under no circumstances will Pradyot Manikya or any of his team members compromise on that basic core demand of greater Tipra land. If they give it to us in writing, we will think about an alliance. If they do not think about it, uh, giving it in, uh, in writing, then chunao mein dekha jayega kaun jeetta hai, kaun hai. So, if I were to interpret what you said from the outside, can I decode to say that all options are open? No, you can, uh, you can say that all options are closed until they do not give it to us. Any of the parties in writing, all options are closed because I don't look at them and play my game. We look at our own strengths and come on the ground. If they want to come and align with us, they'll have to give it to us in writing. We do not want to lose our credibility in front of our people because we have promised them something and we've been elected and voted for that very promise. So even this idea of a greater Tripura or a greater Nagaland is very passionately advocated by those who believe in it and equally passionately opposed by those who are impacted. If you just step out from just what you do individually to look at it from a pan-Northeast perspective and from the perspective of the central government, how do you think the BJP uh, should be approaching such demands? Uh, it's very complex, you know, uh, the northeastern states. Manipur is different, Tripura is different, so is Assam and so is Arunachal. Even in our state, there has been demands. Now, certain demands have been given. In the case of Tripura, certain demands which they are seeking I don't know what all demands they are seeking, but certain demands which they are seeking for their own tribal rights 
If it is as per the constitutional provision, why not? Why not? So, is it, so if it's as per the constitutional provision within the constitution, and if things are to be uh, uh, done, I'm 100% I'm, I'm sure the central government will also you know, look into the it. The interesting thing is we have Sushmita who's been spending as much time in Tripura right now as she is in Assam. And she's seeing a potential alliance conversation going on between the BJP and the tribal front. So, Sushmita, is the Trinamool a real player in Tripura, you think, in the next election? Or do you think it's just going to be another Goa for Didi? I think um, uh, Goa was, Go, Goa was uh, something that I think the party gave very little time. You know, you cannot expect to go to a state in four months and do it. But today, Honorable Chief Minister of Bengal was here earlier in the day. And I, I repeat what she said, that in four months what we achieved, the 8%, and more importantly, we were very much a part of the narrative. I think it was commendable, but one has to start somewhere. Otherwise, you will never have another national party beyond the Congress and the BJP. So it's, it's going to be a comfortable competition between the two. No, but, but can I counter that to say that the politics of Didi and her whole persona is so rooted in a Bengali identity that what is your strength in Bengal becomes your weakness in Panjim? See, I'll tell you something. It's, uh, it's very myopic to say that uh, Trinamul Congress is a Bengali party. See, let's take the case of the by-election of Mamatadi. The very constituency that she fought from and won had more than 40% of non-Bengali voters there. And you see, when it's like saying, who founded the BJP? Shama Prashad Mukherjee. So if, is BJP a Bengali party? Just because their founding father was from Bengal. That, that doesn't work anymore. Yes, they have dominated Bengal politics, no doubt. And uh, uh, that's where historically she rose from. You cannot deny that. But I believe, uh, I mean, I believe that out of all the regional parties, Ahmadmi party is emerging well. And I believe that Trinamul Congress definitely has very good prospects. But yes, it's time consuming. There's a lot of hard work to be done there. And I see a good prospect, especially coming from a different state, which is not Bengal. And that's why I decided to join Trinamul Congress, because I see it has potential. And we are also in Meghalaya, as you know now, apart apart from Tripura. But you know, I just want to say one thing about the constitutional demand. Like Imo said, it's very complicated. Uh, in a democracy, a party like Motha has every right to raise whatever demand they want, whatever they feel is constitution. But you see, if you think about it, in Bengal, there is a demand for Gorkha land. In Assam, there's a demand for Bodo land. You see, so, uh, I mean, I don't know uh, uh, first of all, amending the constitution is in the domain of uh, the central government. You see, so you have to be in power in the center to give that commitment to any party or any group. So how that pans out, uh, I don't know. How that pans out, I can't say. Uh, seven, eight months to election is a long way to go. So, I mean, we'll have to see what happens seven or eight months from now. So we've discussed geography. We've discussed politics, we've discussed ethnicity, but as I'm sure some of you know, our netas have got talent. And amongst the talented uh, aspects of uh, our netas, which are not as public, sometimes they are actually, if you see Pradyut's speeches, uh, sometimes he does great mimicry. So I thought this might be a good opportunity to get the Maharaj to show his skills. So just imagine this is an India's got talent kind of uh, scenario. And now we'll get you to do some political mimicry. Sushmita, do you think that's a good idea? Very good idea. Very good. Imo, you think Perfect. that's a good idea? I think you should go on. Excellent. I've seen him Do you all want to see stage. some mimicry from the Maharaj? Yeah, okay. So I think they're all uh, totally set. I, I, I think that you do a good Chatrugan Sina, you do a good Modi, a good Rahul Gandhi, and some Dharmendra. So you can, t it's your birthday. We, let's wish him happy birthday once again as he gets set to do this. Happy birthday. So uh, take your pick. And let's go. No, no. Uh, see, uh, we from the Northeast, we have a lot of skill. You know, uh, I'm a football player, uh, musician. 
You want me to finger football? Uh, if you had got the football, I mean, I would probably outdo the Trinamool here at least in football. But uh, <laughs> the fact being that uh, we in the Northeast, we have a very different way of uh, outlook to our life. You will see uh, tomorrow uh, Himantu Bisho Sarma coming, Conrad Sangma coming. Conrad is a great guitarist. I I'm a musician. I sing. So we have different level of talent. But before I do something, you know, when I got into politics, I was the original uh, Youth Congress Brigade, when I was in Congress. Mein tha. So we were very serious. And one day my mother called me up and said, Beta, you know, nine months I've kept you in your stomach, in my stomach. And why are you so serious? People will vote for you not because you are always serious or intelligent. Logo ko hasao, logo ko, you know, be approachable, be, you have a good smile. So be nice to people, be humble to people. So in India, two things really work sports and Bollywood. So uh, you told me to mimic uh, Rahul Gandhi, I will not, he's a friend. Modi ji, I'm scared of him. One <laughs> problem ho jayega. But uh, Amita Bachchan, we can do uh, if that is all right. Let's start. We'll get to Modi and Rahul Gandhi, but let's start with uh, Amitabh Bachchan. Look, you talk about development. But before the development, we should talk about cultural identity. So Amitabh Bachchan was like, Dharmendra would go like… He's saying he doesn't have to clap, so he's feeling motivated and encouraged, okay? Otherwise, he'll lose the plot and he'll never get to Modi ji and Rahul Gandhi. Yes. No, Modi ji, I'm scared. Modi ji, I'm scared. Because again, you know, after this, he'll say, Aaj, raat, aad, bajay ke baad. Rahul or Pradyot, you will not stay in this world. So, we will be done. I don't want to uh, scare him. Are we a 2000 rupee note in the world? We will also find those satellites. We will also find those in 2000 rupees. We will also find those in 2000 rupees. And we will not stay alive. I don't want to go into, uh, I don't want to go into uh, Modi ji. But yes, you know, so, uh, in, uh, I've always said this in my, and I've bring, uh, taken a political angle to it. So, you see, uh, in my speeches, I've always said, Shatrugan Sena, 40 years ago, I said, I'm the Bihar of Bihar. I'm the Bihar of Bihar. Amita Bachchan says, I'm the Bihar of Bihar. I'm the Bihar of Bihar. I'm the Bihar of Bihar. He talks about Allahabad all the time, right? Dharmendra, Dharmendra always says, I'm the Jat Yamla Pagla Divana. He talks about his Jat roots. So, when he can talk about his roots, why can't I say that I'm proud to be a Tiprasa? So, in this political mimicry, there is an identity. When Manmohan Singh writes a letter to the France, French Prime Minister saying that the turban should be protected, he is talking about his community as well, the Sikh community. So, when I speak using this mimicry and I tell my people that these people, these famous stars, Prime Ministers, actors have spoken about the community, then, and they are not called communal, then why can't I say I am proud to be a Tiprasa? There is nothing wrong in speaking out for your people, you have sent your message through mimicry, through jokes, but yet the message which has gone through is extremely important. Be proud of who you are. And that's why I come back again in the end and I tell what Shushmita said, more than development, of course development is important, but your identity is paramount. If you do not have your roots to the ground, where is your development going to be? Mr. Emo Singh is a proud friend of mine, he's a proud Maitai and I love him because when I go to his house, I get the Iromba and the Sinju. I don't want to go to his house and have a butter chicken. That I can do it in Ludhiana. It is important to preserve his culture. It's the same way, you know, Maj Bhat in Sushmita's place, it's Bhangui in my place. Northeast is about different culture, different tribes, different facets. We have to protect that. We cannot become a melting point of one viewpoint and that is what we are all scared about. Can we have a round of applause for the birthday boy, please? That was… Huh? He, he's trying for a post-poll alliance with the Congress. So therefore, he's saying that I don't want to do Rahul. Is that true? Are bhaiya, chai pilo bhaiya. We'll talk about Rahul later. So, Pradyut also said that Sushmita sings well, right? We saw from… Uh, we saw she, from… She dances very well, but we can't do that here. But she's got a great voice. Great voice, no? Now, dance I don't want to get into. But we saw from Mamta Banerjee, she sang really well, Sushmita. So now I don't, little bit you have to sing. Come on, you really charged up and egged on uh, Pradyut. And if Didi can sing, then Sushmita can sing as well. Do you agree or not agree? See, can we have a round of, warmer round of applause? Aisa nahi hoga. If you want her to sing, we're not, we're not getting you to dance. Just like a, you saw Didi sing, she was so nice. And I can't sing at all. You can, you can. 
Pradyut said I you sing very well. I, He also support know, and wish, join you. I wish we were fighting each other like the last panel rather than singing to each other. No, but you guys are such good friends. How would you possibly do that? So yes, uh, please go for it. Pradyut, you will sub. You said that you're a very talented musician yourself. So you will jump in and support her the moment she starts. I think let the music be played before the 2023 election. Yeah, come on, yes, yes. that's when we'll both yes. sing the song. No, no, come on, you can't uh, give her an easy way out. Come on, come on, little way. No, 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 don't kill me. I'll run the other side. Come on, please. I'm going to literally just I think recite it. नहीं नहीं अच्छे से. जो दी तो रुड़क शुने क्यों ना आशे तबे एकला चलो रे. That's it. Come on. I think, I think as far as the sweepstakes go, Pradyut won this one. I don't know who will win in Tripura. Uh, Sushmita is also trying very hard, but uh, you'd all agree that 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 round goes to the birthday boy. Uh, Emo, we'll find out separately in Manipur yeah. what talent you have. You're welcome to come over there. We're so happy that you know uh, Rajdeep came during the election, and uh, we're so happy you know Rajdeep came during the election. And we're going to welcome you over there. Please, we'll come Manipur to Tripura. Manipur is beautiful, and, and we'll play football with Pradyut. Yes, we'll play football together. Yeah, that should be nice. But this football will be different from Khela Hobe. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much for being such fantastic sports. It's good to see the fact that there were three uh, ex-congressmen with some bonhomi and camaraderie now representing different political points and no hostility. Uh huh. No hostility. No hostility. Yeah. So thank you so much. Uh, Emo, uh, Pradyut, and Sushmita for joining us here at the India Today East Conclave. Thank you so much.